ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the next video on environmental science and specifically going over ecological niches. Let's get started on this next video. So what is an ecological niche? Well, a niche is how an organism is going to interact with its biotic and abiotic factors within its environment. And what we can think of a niche is, is we can think of it as a job or a role that each species is going to play in an ecosystem. Theoretically, each species has its own unique niche, and no two are exactly the same. A description of a species niche would include things like what it eats, where it eats, where it lives, what type of habitat it prefers, how it affects other species, and how it affects the abiotic environment. These are all things that we can kind of associate with that organism's job or role within the environment. Now, in order to understand niches, we have to also understand tolerance. Tolerance is the ability to survive and reproduce under a range of environmental conditions. And if we think about this, if we look at two different types of fish here, we can see that we have in the Indonesian islands clownfish, and then we can see at the poles we have these cod, Pacific cod, when we're talking about the north. Pacific. Well, if we're talking about the tolerance of these two species, how is the tolerance for these individual species different? Well, if we look at the range for these species here, we're going to see that closer to the equator, we're going to see warmer temperatures, and as we move towards the poles, cooler temperatures like we saw in our previous video. And we're going to see water that goes through and is associated with those temperature differences. They're going to inhabit this range here. And we're going to see these clownfish inhabit temperature ranges from anywhere from 72 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this is going to be different than the Pacific Cod's range. And further north or further south, we're going to see cod inhabit temperatures of 34 to 48 degrees Fahrenheit, so significantly cooler. Now if we were to take these organisms and put them in their respective ranges, what we're going to see is they would go through and die because they simply do not have the tolerance for those individual temperature ranges. And we can see a graphical representation of this when we talk about all species that we go through and look at for tolerance. We can see a range of environmental variables, and to the left we can see the low end of that range, and to the right we can see the high end of that range. And then we can also go through and compare that to the populations. We can see that all species are going to have an optimum range in which they go through and survive. And we can see that there is an upper limit to that tolerance. We can also see that there's a lower limit to that tolerance. But there's an optimum range where we get the maximum amount of species. Anything beyond these limits of tolerance, the species simply cannot go through and survive and the population will be close to zero. Now this is going to be important for us to go through and think about because niches are going to evolve based on species tolerance. And we're going to see that organisms are going to kind of fit these jobs and fit these descriptions within their ecosystems based on how they go through and evolve with the abiotic and biotic factors. So a niche is its job or role within the environment, but it's also going to be dependent upon how these species go through and evolve as they move into that ecosystem. Now there's going to be two types of niches that we go through and look at. There's going to be a fundamental niche, which is the entire set of conditions under which an animal or population or species can survive and reproduce itself. And we're also going to go through and see this realized niche. And realized niches is the set of conditions that are actually used by an animal after interactions with other species. So after predation and competition have been taken into account. Let's go through and look at these barnacles and see this in action. Now to better understand realized versus fundamental niches here, we can look at barnacles along a seawall here. Species A is going to be in its fundamental niche. This is the complete job description, as if no other species were influencing these barnacles. So without the presence of predation or competition, these barnacles can take up that entire seawall as it moves through the current. On the other hand, the realized niche is the niche that reflects what's happening in the real world. And we can see competition now between barnacles of species A and species B. So as seen on the left, species B occupies the higher zones of the cliff face, while species A occupies the lower zones. The barnacle species are interacting with each other and with their environment. This is how it's going to play out in the real world when we have predation and competition present in an ecosystem. 
Now there are two reasons why niches are important for us to understand. Niches are important because of the competitive exclusion principle, and niches reduce competitive exclusion in an env environment, and they can lead to resource partitioning. Remember, resource partitioning is the division of limited resources by species to help avoid competition in ecological niches. So when we talk about niches, what niches allow organisms to do is thrive and survive within environments as they go through and evolve. And niches allow ecosystems to remain stable because each of these organisms inhabits different specific parts within that environment and ecosystem. All right, so did you learn? Did you learn a couple of things from this video? Did you learn what an ecological niche is? Did you learn what a species tolerance is? And lastly here, did you learn why ecological niches are important to ecosystems? This is going to be the end of the video. I will see you all in class tomorrow.